The Legionary is the main infantry option of the three different empires of Caldradia. If you played the game for at least a year, you would probably know there was close to no competition for these guys, as they ranked number one in all melee testings regarding main infantry troops. But with the release of 1.8, with armor being slightly buffed and the blunt damage being slightly nerfed, the question, is the Legionary still the best? becomes a legitimate one. So let's dive deep and analyze this unit. The Legionary's role is one of the simplest among infantry. With the lack of a throwable weapon and a short spear, this unit main focus is to clash with other infantry, handling cavalry when needed, and tanking incoming volleys. Starting from the head armor, the Legionary brings an average value of 47, brought by the lower helmet with metal strips. This will rank the Legionary 5th among infantry and 17th overall. When it comes to the body armor, the Legionary brings an average value of 55, brought by the Cataphrag Lamellar armor, and the Legionary reinforced studded harness. This will rank the Legionary 6th among infantry and 12th overall. When it comes to the head plus body, the Legionary will make the top 10 of the most armored troops in the game with a value of 102. Despite breaking into the top 10, this set is far from the best across main infantry where the Legionary only ranked 5th, but they will gain 3 positions to 2nd place when considering all armor types. When talking about the equipment, it's hard to not talk about the main weapons, one of which was the single reason the Legionary has been so dominant for so long, their weapon being the smallest destruction in a stick known to man, more commonly known as Calvadic Mace. With an insane 101 swing speed, a low damage of 56 but of the blunt variety, and a minuscule length of 47 that won't get stuck on any friendly shield, just a glance at these numbers and the non-expert eye might think this weapon is pure crap, but in reality, this is the closest thing possible to what the perfect weapon for an AI troop with 130 100 skill looks like. The swing speed alone makes the legionary a very tough opponent to bring down, and on top of that, the blunt damage delivered by the weapon allows the Legionary to take care of armored units with ease, while at the same time not killing them, allowing you to pick up all the prisoners you will need to feed your army without the Doctor of Perk. Unfortunately, when something looks too good to be true, it usually is, and 33% of your Legionaries won't use the Calradic Mace, instead using a far worse option called the Fine Steel Paramarion. This weapon is a sword, and generally that's all you need to know to understand why it's bad, but to be more analytic, this weapon's ring speed of just 84 isn't enough to make the high damage of 72 worth it. The length will also play a role as it is a very long for a one-handed weapon. Now, we've seen some bad weapons perform very well, like in the case of the Azerai veterans, but that's because the veterans had 5 more head armor and 7 more body armor than the legionary, and also they had 30 more one-handed skill. The legionary quite simply doesn't have as much of an hyper armor bonus as the veterans, and this will become apparent later. When talking about the stopping power of this unit, the Legionary will bring two different shields. The first one is the Fortify Kai, an insanely tanky 530 HP with a great length of 110. The other one is a far worse Stutter Bound Kai shield that brings only 270 HP but has yet again a good length of 110. Despite the second shield telling us Garius and company were running out of funds for their military, they are both very good options for protecting the unit from projectiles. Last piece of equipment we have talked about is the very controversial Pilum. I'm sure you have seen someone at one point complaining about the fact that this weapon can't be thrown by the AI despite clearly having a throwable icon, and how this makes the troop worse and blah blah blah. But I'm here to tell you that it is in fact a blessing in disguise. I will always prefer having the other versatility of a throwing weapon, but in the case of a throwing spear, they simply don't do enough when thrown, and I would quite frankly tell my troops to hold fire so they could keep it. In the case of the Pilum, this is possibly the best spear in the game since the short but not too short length of 114 allows the unit to be capable of landing hits on the enemy even in a 1v1 situation, a thing pretty much any other spear will fail to do. And when it comes to the anti-cav upside, this spear fits all the marks of an effective spear in Banner standards. It's short, 
and extremely fast. With all of this said, it should be no surprise that Legionary was one of the three units capable of defeating an equal amount of guns. Now, if they can handle the most powerful troop in the game, you can figure out what they could do to other riders. Now that we are done with the equipment, let's talk about the glucy tests and stats. Overall, the Legionary ranked second among infantry, with a total KD of 6.12 and a KD of 119.87 against low tiers. They ended up losing 445 units out of 3500, or roughly 12.5%, and ended up with a casualty chance against low tiers of 1.68%. Also, they ended the careers of 2,722 custom battle soldiers. As we can see from the stats, the Legionary is far from the best at dealing with lower tiers, ranking 15 kills and 14 deaths. But what this unit really excels at, way more than any other unit, is the performance against tier 5, where they rank first in class, but the same can't be said against tier 4, where they only rank fourth. Anyway, let's go ahead and list the pros and cons. The armor of the legionary is quite solid, with not really any weaknesses but also no strength either. They do bring some good shields, even if one of them is low on HP, it still protects the unit very well. The Calorotic Mace is great even after the nerf, but the Paramarion is now even worse. They are not a very versatile unit, as the Pilum can be thrown, but even if it did, I still wouldn't consider them to be versatile. They are great at dealing with cavalry, thanks to the Pilum. Their melee performance is average at best, but they are very reliable. They excel against tier 5, so if you play with some mods that increase the quality of enemies' armies, it should be taken into consideration. And they take prisoners thanks to the Calradic Maces, so if your strategy is recruiting from your prison as you keep conquering, they are great for that. I'll give this unit a 4 out of 5. Pax 1.8 heavily impacted their performance on the field, especially when fighting lower tiers. But they are still one, if not the most reliable main infantry option as far as melee is concerned, since there is no matchup they can lose, although I wouldn't consider it as important as other troops who can very easily take care of any troop from tier 1 to tier 4. They are one of the few troops that can find value from their spears and that's quite special for Bannerlord, but their play style is very much limited and smashing man is their only option. It's quite sad to see the kings falling from their thrones and joining the mid tiers of troops, but they had a long run we all enjoyed. Anyway, let me know what you guys think and what troop you want me to cover next. And a special thanks to all of the 1000 people who allowed the channel to enter the YouTube Partner Program from today. I'm looking forward to bring to you guys way more videos dedicated to Bannerlord on a more consistent basis in the following weeks. I do owe you all an apology as things have been very slow lately. If you want to watch more videos like this, make sure to check the playlist on your right, or on your left is the video YouTube things you're going to enjoy next. Anyway, goodbye and have a good one.